Hello beloved and welcome to this vlog. We will immediately continue with our um, with our program uh, called Words Are Spirit because we left in a hurry in the last vlog so we will continue immediately with this slide where I also again emphasize that the maturity has been here for a long time the maturity of the body of Christ as a whole again as a uh, as an uh, as an entity as an organism so again what is the important criterion to um, to assess maturity it is of course certainty it is certainty certainty that you are in the body of Christ certainty that you are sealed with the spirit of promise certainty that you are sealed with in the holy spirit of god for the day of salvation that certainty i'm talking about let's read in whom you also on hearing the word of truth the evangel of your salvation in whom on believing also you are sealed with the holy spirit of what exactly promise god keeps his promises so that seal is impossible to be uh, broken it's not possible ephesians 1 13 that that's where you can read it and the next in ephesians 4 verse 30 it says and do not be causing sorrow to the holy spirit of god by which you are sealed for the day of deliverance so until that day of deliverance of what of our bodies our humiliated bodies we are sealed in holy spirit so please bear that in mind it's about being certain of who you are and where you are in god's plan so that is a very important sign of maturity this is spiritual so let's continue so sealing as i said is of course assurance and that seal can obviously not be broken by anyone other than the sealer himself so then the question becomes since when then has maturity been a reality since paul completed the word of god that is what i was going to say which was his prerogative according to colossians 1 25 let's read of which i became a dispenser in accord with the administration of god which is granted to me for you to what yes exactly to complete the word of God it's the Apostle Paul who completed the word of God not the Catholic Church so they, 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 ha, they didn't have anything to do with that it was completed thanks to complete inspiration by Holy Spirit and that to me is a huge relief and that contributes greatly to assurance let's continue so miracle gifts will were still by in the previous administration remember were, were still needed temporarily so while the word was not yet complete so this one is a very important one and of course israel was still in view so that's another reason god made use only when necessary when the the gap in god the one of the gaps in god's words uh, god's word need to needed to be filled he made use of miraculous gifts so really supernatural spiritual gifts you know the nine gifts of the spirit in one uh, in first corinthians 12 so these are the spirit, uh, the gifts i was talking about and also while the word was not yet complete to make specific things known in the local ecclesias so in those ecclesias 
uh, sometimes specific things needed to be made known uh, in a supernatural way. So that's why God gave those miraculous gifts only when the wor- while the word was not yet complete. So this is very important to know and also understand, to grasp. Today, in this day and age, again, no more miracles. Let me get rid of this one. No more miracles and no more miracle gifts as well as soon as God's word was completed. So the man, if today man, uh, you have man spoken prophecies or revelations if you want, they are all unlawful and invalid because they fall outside of God's plan. They are not in the truth. They are not in the truth. They are not in the truth. They are in the lie. Please be aware of that. I'm talking scripture. I'm talking rightly dividing scripture or correctly cutting scripture. So please bear that in mind. So now that God's word is complete and fully spirit inspired, then all of us can really uh, sigh in relief and inner peace because God indeed takes care of his own word by making sure through divine inspiration that his his word is completely uh, inspired, also completely composed in the right order, and the right books are included and letters and epistles so both the hebrew um the hebrew scriptures and the greek scriptures as you probably know moses wrote a large portion of the torah not everything because also adam wrote also uh, the son noah noah and the sons of noah wrote so Uh, You can read that in Genesis, but that's another story. Um, If you look at the Tanakh, it was the priest Ezra that uh, did a lot of, um, how do you call that, Uh, editing, the ending editing. And uh, Paul did the whole editing at the um, end of his life, uh, aided by people like Luke, and also Peter, before his death, was also contributing uh, to that uh, ministry, to that part, and that, that share. So we can be assured of the fact that God's word has been completed by the ones who were authorized to do that. So let's look at the other a passage in 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 where we can see how we grow spiritually as well because there it says that all of scripture is inspired by God and is beneficial for teaching, for exposure, for correction and for discipline in righteousness. So that's the truth all of scripture but again above that equally true is that scripture that scripture that is for everyone and inspired by god is not addressed to everyone that's the difference it is addressed to two separate audiences israel and the gentiles and it's even what people don't tend to expect and that is that only the 13 letters of Paul are addressed to the Gentiles in this day and age and the rest of scripture is more or less addressed to Israel of course we can learn from that and we can uh, get a lot of truths which are absolute truths truths uh, most of the time about God's sovereignty and about God's love but let's continue so again how can we grow spiritually 
And what is the only way? By studying indeed, studying scripture, but also cutting it correctly or rightly divide scripture. But then there comes a next attack. What is the attack? Because people don't give up, huh? The next attack is this one. They will say, but the word is only made up of letters, isn't it? Haven't we learned that the letter kills, but the spirit makes alive? So how can we only rely on those black and white uh, words in that written scripture? So, uh, at uh, face value, this is true, yes? But if we read in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 6, then we discover immediately in the context how it, this is uh, put, the letter kills, but the spirit makes alive. What context was it? It was the context of the law of Moses. But let's read after that verse 7 to 8, and then you will see that for yourself. Now, if the dispensation of death by letters chiseled in stone came in glory so that the sons of Israel were not able to look intently into the face of Moses because of the glory of his face, face which was being nullified even, how shall not rather the dispensation of the Spirit be in utter glory exactly that's what it's talking about it's comparing the dispensation of death because of the fact that the law proved to be infirm not as as such but through the flesh in our flesh we are not able to keep the law, not for one second. Because if you think you keep one commandment and you make one little slip up of one of the other nine, you are, you are um, how do you say that, considered as transgressing the whole law, all ten commandments in that sense. That's what Galatians says. So be aware of that. The law is infirm through the flesh. So what Christianity is trying to do is not only futility, it is foolishness. The result is terrible. Look at the many deaths, uh, deaths uh, of, uh, the, in the desert because of what they did they promised that all uh, or that the law said we will do and they didn't do it because they were not able to do that because of their flesh but you can read this in romans 8 verse 3 and while you're at it please study romans 8 and romans 6 and 7 very important okay so what's it all about Words are nothing less than expressions of thoughts. And Jesus is the incarnate word. He is the Logos. He used to be the Logos. And now he is the incarnate Logos, so to speak. So the written word of God consists of his words, God's words, and refers exclusively to Jesus the whole scripture refers to Jesus he is the one it revolves around so the conclusion we can read that in John 6 63 where it says the spirit is that which is vivifying is making a life beyond the reach of death the flesh is not benefiting anything the declarations uh, which I have spoken to you are spirit and are life, says Jesus. So words only come to life for us when God through his spirit opens up our mind so that 
uh, we will grasp, we will realize, re realize the coin will fall, so to speak. Then the words will come to life. Otherwise, you can go to any cemetery, sorry, uh, seminary, sorry, that was my friend Martin Sander, uh, any seminary, but you will not grasp God. You will not know God. You will not know his plan because you will study just words on paper, but those words will, will not come to life and because your mind will be closed because spirit is not inspiring the words for you. Very important. So it's God's choice, first, uh, first of all, and also, of course, the mindset with which you, um, uh, with which you, uh, how do you say that, perceive the word of God, the level of seriousness or reference, uh, if you want. So it goes even further because God also makes sure that you even have the will and the desire to study his word with reference, like I said, knowing that these are God's words. And then also comes the realization that words indeed are spirit, so they can hurt or make happy. Truth or what? So that's why 1 Corinthians 2 verse 15 reads, now he who is spiritual is indeed examining all. It's about examination. It's about studying, not merely reading. So what is the opposite of being spiritual? The opposite is being soulish. Soulish people are focused on soulish things. What are we talking about? So the declaration is, God's word, soulish people are saying these things. God's word is only part of his communication. Again, they want to say, they are saying with, in other words, that other utterances like prophecies and uh, utterances of revelations are also uh, part of God's communication. And that's not true. We already established that. So, these declarations are from a soulish mind, a mind that is soulish focused. Yes, so focus toward outward appearances and focus toward sensory perception. That's the problem. So think of miracles, healings and other uh, manifestations, sensory perceptible manifestations. That's what these people are focused on. But it is written, now the soulish man, these people, is not receiving those things which are of the Spirit of God, invisible, for they are so stupidity to him, and he is not able to know them seeing that they are spiritually examined. Again, the same word, studied, examined. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. Time is flying. The next one is going to be short, I think. <laughs> yeah, the next one is going to be short. Okay. So this is going to be the last, or maybe I will end with this slide. Let me, um, let me uh, go back. So we just talked here about soulish people, right? And we have put them against spiritual people. So what is spiritual people? When are you spiritual? When you are spiritually focused. You are focused on studying the word of God. That's a strong relationship. And here I will end. And in the next vlog, I will go further through, uh, through this slide and go to the end of this topic.
Thanks for watching. See you next time.